So now in this video we're going to look at a new timing relay I got. First off, um, if it is off, then of course it will not uh, work uh, properly. So you can see we got the uh, countdown, but uh, nothing switched. Uh, we want to make sure that it is on right there if we have that problem. That was confusing me a little bit. But in case, I have this set so that when I give a high signal there, we have the uh, output, or we have it switch for half of a second, 0.5 seconds. So now the camera won't pick up the display very well with the uh, light on, but we're gonna look at the buttons here. So we got stop, uh, set, up, and down for the buttons. So now we have some options for how this uh, relay behaves. So I hold it down, we got uh, P1, and uh, there's a, a few different ones that we can do. There's also two, there's a three, a couple options, and there is four uh, right there. Once we get the one that we want, I want uh, P101. Uh, we can hold down the button, it will flash and uh, lock into place. Now if I want to set the setting, again I hold it down, press it. Now we see OP, so that sets the uh, timing. I have it set for 0.5 seconds. We can press stop to change it to five seconds or we can uh, press stop again, now it will be minutes. So we can go up to 999 minutes if we so uh, desire. Um, but uh, let's say I wanna do a 4.5, hold it down, and then uh, you can also press the button to move it up uh, one increment at a time right there. We can do that. And I'm gonna hold it again till we see it flash. Now it should be uh, locked into place. Let's give it a high signal, and uh, it should switch for 4.5 seconds as you can see right there. So now, under uh, P1.1, if we give it a high signal, and uh, give it another high signal while well, the timing's going down, uh, nothing will happen, it finishes the process. We will hold down the button and change it to uh, P1.2. Now if we give it a high, it starts the, uh, should start the uh, process. Let's uh, hold this down, there we go. Flash it and let it uh, lock into place, there we go. So now, Every time I give it a high signal, it resets, as you can see there. We can also give it a low signal anytime we want, um, but uh, the high signal uh, resets it. Le low signal does uh, nothing. Um, now, we will hold this down, oops, and uh, let's uh, lock it in place, hold it down, change it to P103. Uh, let's try that again. There we go, P13. Lock it into place, hold this down, should flash, and then it will lock into place. Now, every time we give it a high signal, so it will finish the process, but now, if I give it a high signal, it turns off. So, uh, the initial one, we had switch bounce there, will go to 4.5 seconds, but uh, if we have it counting down, and we wanna turn it off, we can give it another high signal. So we had bounce, I made a couple like rapid, uh, in, uh, high signals there and uh, so the second one canceled out the first so we would have to add a switch debouncer to uh, make this effective or use a digital uh, switch so now we'll take a quick look at the power needs so right now this is just powering the module right there the LEDs and uh, everything I switched this back to a uh, P1.1 uh, which it's set there of course it won't work properly if we do that we gotta wait for it flash to go uh, back uh, so yeah, it looks like it's a little bit lower when you're not setting it. Uh, give it a high signal for the uh, 4.5. So it switched, the LED is on, even though we didn't hear the click, uh, and then uh, it just turned off. So um, this LED really doesn't have, it's a uh, blue LED, only has like a few, few uh, milliamps of current going through it. We can remove it just to see how much uh, power the switch needs. So it looks like it needs about approximately 40 milliamps of current when it's energized right there. The switch part itself doesn't need any current when it's not energized, but the uh, board does. And um, right now it's in the normal position. That's the normally open uh, setting right there. So right now it's open. This is the normal position. Open is off. All right, so now I uh, unplugged everything. We'll take a closer look. First off, I had this on the plastic because there's a bunch of pins on here and um, I didn't want, you know, the pins to come into contact through the connections of the breadboard there. And I got uh, four of these modules together. They were four bucks each for a total of $16. 
When it comes to the relay itself, we got the com, the middle pin there, that's always connected to the switch. Then we got normally open, which is off when the coil is not energized. How we had it wired up, we could also use the normally closed. So that would be on when the coil is not energized, uh, but when it is energized, that one would turn off. And also, if you're uh, new to relays, it's important to realize that uh, this uh, right here has nothing to do electrically over here. This board just determines whether the coil is energized or not. This is a mechanical switch, and uh, all the electricity that flows through here is uh, just to here. It doesn't interact with any of the electricity over there. And of course we had uh, four jumpers on the other side. So the uh, top two right there, that is the uh, power supply. So we can go from uh, 6 volts to 30 volts and uh, ground is the uh, negative supply there. That's uh, the red uh, rail for the uh, positive supply. We were using 6 volts in this video but we could have gone up to 30. Now the trigger, so that's a, a signal. So we got uh, ground, that's the uh, negative supply and it's waiting until we give a high input which in this video meant I touched the trigger to the positive supply uh, right there. So it looks at the uh, voltage differences there. Um, it says that you can go down to uh, three volts uh, to trigger that. And I think that, uh, you know, three volts or higher. I think that's uh, no matter what the voltage range is for the uh, power supply. So I think this is about as clear as we're going to get it. Uh, no matter what voltage uh, you're using, it looks like you can get to about uh, 10 amps. Now they got 250 volts AC, 125 volts AC. Uh, don't do that based on uh, my videos. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks like you can get up to about 38 uh, volts DC, maybe a 28. I don't know why they got uh, two numbers uh, there. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, you can go up to uh, 10 amps. So you wouldn't really use this to switch LEDs. Um, there's much better options. Uh, this would be for more uh, high power uh, stuff. But of course you can switch low power stuff. That's perfectly fine. Uh, so 10 amps would probably be the absolute max. Probably wanted to stay like 5 amps or uh, lower. Um, but in uh, any case, uh, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting to the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.